Hey everybody, it's Darren Cheek from Ozark Mountain Lures. It's December the 21st, it's the first day of winter, and I'm out setting some otter traps up for the next week. I'm going to run some bobcats with it, and on my YouTube channel I've had a lot of questions about oversized pocket set that I use on otter. So, I'm by myself, I don't have a tripod, so I'm having to record by hand. So this will be a little bit shaky, shaky video, and I went ahead and pretty much tried to construct the set uh, beforehand, get as much done before I turn the recording on, so that's what you're looking at. So basically we're on a creek that I know otter travel up and down. I've caught several otters over the years here. This is just a normal otter location, and as you can see, it's open water, it's shallow, Maybe the deepest spot is five feet out in the middle, but there's nowhere to really drown an otter. And I'm running these traps every day. It's not a uh, extended line or anything like that. So I feel comfortable not drowning him and just holding him in a foothold. Uh, if I wasn't checking every day, it was a two-day check, I would definitely uh, drown. Wouldn't set it because I wanted to drown him. But I... Uh, I feel like this location would be a pretty good spot considering I'm pretty much road trapping. You can you can see my pickup truck right up on the road. But anyways, the reason I'm sitting here, if you were trying to catch an otter on this at a location like this, there's no pinch points, there's no bottom edge sets really. Um, you can draw it. You can try the toilets, which I set some toilets up every once in a while. But I prefer to keep the otter in the water. So I found this spot. And the way I found it as I was looking up and down the banks for some muskrat holes and I ran into it. I got up into this area while I was walking it the other day and I smelt the smell of otter scat. And... I could see a kind of a faint trail going up here, um, and this would be the best place for the otter to go up. Um, so I went ahead and decided to set set this location. Um, basically, my oversized pocket I just took and cleared uh, back the bank, shaved it off, slicked it up real good, made a large hole, uh, probably a 12 inch opening. It goes back as far as my elbow up. Um, from where the hole kind of starts to the water line there is probably a good 12 to 15 inches. Um, so I'm wanting the otter, he's going to be, he ain't going to be like the mink and coon most likely. He's going to not be running down the, the bank or the sides. He's going to be coming from the water. So I want to kind of build a place for him to approach far back and keep his keep his intentions on looking up at that hole and kind of avoid trying to hit catch as many coon here um the closer up to the hole the more likely hood of catching a coon will be and this there's no way of not accidentally catching coon here um on these type of sets so you just got to get used to that so basically I've got my, there's nowhere to, it's all flat rock under the water. There's no place to put a stake in. So I've had to bring a cinder block with me and I attach it to a uh, piece of 332nd extension cable. And the trap I'm using is one of my favorite otter traps. Um, I use a lot of no BS one and a halves. I haven't got any of those with me. And another trap I really like, I like long springs for otter, like number three, Sleepy Creek, not offset. Number four, Sleepy Creek, uh, again, not offset, completely closed jawed. Um, I like the old, the old long springs are good. But this is a trap that I really like. It's a old Blake and Lamb. I believe it's a number three, double under spring, and it's just as strong as the day it it came from the factory. That's what I like about these old Blake and Lambs. They are extremely strong and the square jaw fits an otter's foot really well and um, once an otter's in this, they don't normally get out like they do with 
with a lot of traps I found. Um, and you can find them pretty cheap at the conventions, usually. I got this from the Missouri convention. Um, they're relatively cheap, and they're one of those traps, if it gets stolen, I don't want it to get stolen. But if it was to get stolen, I wouldn't be as heartbroken as if I lost a Sleepy Creek or a... Um, or something like that, because I can replace this trap by going to conventions and find them just as good, just as strong. Um, I've got several of these, and I I really like them. And they you can get them pretty cheap at the conventions, and they're they're just as good or better than these old these new traps. So I'm gonna set my trap out, kind of offset. And nor I would normally set it kind of up in this area if I was coon trapping or whatever. But I want to try to avoid the coon now. It's not going to avoid the coon 100%. But further back, and you'll be surprised, you'll catch a, catch a uh, mink in a set like this. So there's a trap. I'll push it in and bed it a little bit better. But since I got the camera in my hand, I... I can't really do that. So I'm going to put sticks to poke that otter in the chest when he comes up. Um, he's going to be swimming up. I want him to get right around the trap, and I want to poke him in the chest, uh, get him to put his front feet down, and then he starts walking and lifting himself up, and his back feet's going to go across. So I'm going to get all four feet across his trap. Um, and I do this on most all of my otter sets it just makes me feel better i don't know if it's necessary as much as a something that makes me feel feel better when i sleep at night but i want to poke that otter in the chest i need to put those right at water level so now it comes time to finish this set off and I'm gonna bait show the baiting and lure procedure on this um, I'm not gonna put what I call bait in the back of that hole uh, because you don't need it honestly what works better is what I have up here and I just took some otter scat that I found at a different location there when a farmer um, just plain old otter scat, pretty fresh, smells like otter, it's from a different creek, and that's going to be my bait, so I'm just going to take that and sling it, sling it back there. I put a little salmon oil on it to give it that fishy, a little bit fresher smell, take a few pieces and rub it, rub it on there, that's really all the bait, baiting so to say, I need to do. Now to lure this set, I make otter lure, it works really well, but another one that I like to use other people's stuff, and another one that I find works tremendously well, that's Clint Locklear's otter call. Um, really good stuff. The camera's gonna get wobbly. I'm gonna lure this set up real quick. And I only got one hand to do it. So I'm going to take a nice little glob about like that, and I'm going to toss it in the back of that hole. Um, and then I'm going to take one more small glob. I got a stick stuck to me. And I'm going to put it right down low. So that otter, when he comes, approaches, he's getting a real good whiff of it right there. Uh, and that basically is the construction of the pocket. Uh, next time I'll make put on this video, I'll try to find another location to make this set. And... Uh, from start to finish I'll have my tripod and camera and have show up from start to finish but this is a rough rough go at it um, 
got your trap. That trap's probably a good 16 inches from the bank. The the center of the bank, it's offset a little bit. Uh, got a nice big pan on it. When an otter comes through here to hit his toilet, uh, or he's traveling down this, trust me, he's going to see this. This stands out it's just like bobcat trapping, in my opinion, when you're trapping otters with lure and bait and not a blind set, which I... Personally, I'm a blind setter. I set 90, 80% of my sets are blind sets, no lure, no bait. But when I do set it, I like to do it almost like a bobcat where it's bam in your face loud. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see if we can come back and show you some results. Hey, everybody. It's Darren Cheek from Ozark Mountain Lures. I know my video, my photography isn't the best, but I'm using my phone. I recorded this set, making this set with my, using my phone, so it was wobbly. Uh, but it's a high, the high water pocket that I made about a week ago. I lured it up with some of Locklear's otter call, which I love that stuff. Uh, Clint Locklear makes some really good lure. His otter call is by far my favorite. I use a lot of it. Uh, as a lure ma and bait maker, I use my own a lot, but... Um, I have not produced anything that works quite as well as the Clint's uh, Otter Call and Mike Marciata's 401. But anyways, I made a high water pocket, showed how I did it. Used a number four Blake and Lamb double underspring here. And last night we got a pretty good first Missouri storm of the year. Um, got a little bit of snow and ice. But this morning I, or afternoon I went and checked my traps after the weather kind of cleared up. Uh, it's really cold out here and you can see I got a lot of damage up here I mean it it's tore up so I knew there was something going on here and I had it connected to a cinder block because we're in a shallow creek and there's absolutely nowhere to stake it in so I kind of put it on a cinder block as a drag and at first glance I don't see any didn't see anything but here's my uh, high water pocket I'm gonna get down here in the water I'll show you a view what it looks like from this angle, but there's my big pocket. And if you go right up under here, up under that root wad right there, you can see there's something there. It's an otter. I don't know if he's still alive. He hasn't moved since I got here. I'm going to try to check real quick. I'm going to put this on pause, and I'm going to get him out of there, and we'll come back on film. So, I thought that otter was dead for sure. He looked dead. Uh, I touched him with a stick, and he's very much alive. Got him in hind foot catch on, a, uh, on that number four. Here comes my dog. He heard the action. I got out of the water because he swam towards me, and he wasn't happy. I'm going to get off here and get him dispatched before he gets himself loose and my dog gets hurt and get back on camp. Well, I got the otter dispatched. thought I was going to get otter bit there for a second, but... I got the otter dispatched, pulled him over here. This is the original pocket. He's made a mess of it. You can see it went back there pretty deep. The waters went up quite a bit here, but I just wanted to show you the catch. pretty nice otter not a huge one by any means but nevertheless it's an otter uh got it in the black and lamb number four double under spring there's no foot damage essentially just had him by two feet or two toes but these are just like the number 11 or other traps once they lock on to an animal they're done. They're caught. Had him, held him until I could get him dispatched. He wasn't going anywhere. You can see I had him on quite a bit of cable. He made he made a big mess while he was here, but we're getting to take him home. That's all that counts. But there's the catch. Caught him in a uh, oversized high water pocket, basically, is what I call it. Uh, so when you guys are out having trouble blocking those creeks down using your cotta bears uh, 
try these. Just check them every day.